Good morning everybody, how are you going? Chris Crawley here. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an insight into um, what I do as a forensic psychologist. So for most people you know that I'm a treating psychologist so I provide treatment mostly to um, perinatal clients, so people with issues to do with having babies. Um, hey James, how are you going? From the other side of the world. Um, and so as a clinical psychologist, I provide treatment services and assessment services, and I spend a lot of my work mentoring other mental health professionals, mostly, mostly psychologists, but also social workers. And uh, people often wonder what it is that I do as a forensic psychologist, because that's the other side of my role. Good morning, Nat. Hello, Steve. Nice to have you with me. Um, hey, Melissa. So as a forensic psychologist, the word forensic brings up lots of different ideas for people usually to do with crime scenes and murders and cutting up bodies and things like that and I reassure you I do none of those things. Um, I once tested a forensic psychology class, gave them a little pop quiz, gave them a multiple choice test and one of the items was uh, you know, what does a forensic psychologist do and one of the options was cutting up brains. And of course, we do not <laughs> cut up brains, not for, not, not for a living anyway. Um, so as a forensic psychologist, we're talking about the juxtaposition between psychology and the law. So in the past, I've worked in prisons as a, as a psychologist in, within the prison system, providing treatment services and providing um, reports to the court on criminal behaviours, um, to the parole boards, sentencing reports, things like that. These days, because most of my clinical work is in the perinatal field, what I tend to do more of in the forensic realm is to do with the law as it pertains to parenting matters. So some of those issues are um, family court disputes. So sometimes I'm asked to act as what's called a single expert which sounds really important um, but really it just means that you're an unbiased party assessing a family assessing their needs and their capacities as parents um, and sometimes I'm asked to conduct assessments for child protection and child safety matters and that's why I'm here today so unlike my son who wondered if I was going to jail today uh, no I'm not here to give uh, witness evidence in the same way that you might if you're witnessing a car accident I'm more around providing an opinion and my job is to help the, the court understand certain aspects from a psychological perspective of what's gone on with a particular family but I wanted to touch base and I guess normalize the experience a little bit for everybody because it can be really nerve-wracking so I've done this lots of times now and I quite I, the funny thing is being in the courtroom doesn't bother me hi Gerda how are you this morning um, there's the court behind me uh, well, in the magistrates court building um, so being in the courtroom doesn't bother me because then you're in the moment and you are being asked a question and you can either answer it or you can't um, what is more stressful is the preparation part so when I'm asked to appear in court I then go through a little process of wondering, oh gosh, can I remember the particular case? Because some of them are years old. Can I uh, remember the rationale behind the decisions that I have made and the recommendations that I've made? Um, and then of course, then I sit down and I actually read the report that I'm going to be giving evidence on. And it all comes flooding back. So the big message is that yes, I feel just as nervous and anxious and agitated as anybody would because going to court is a little bit like, um, you never know what's going to be asked. So it's almost like an exam in some ways. And um, But the thing to remember is that everybody's there for a positive outcome. Everybody wants a positive outcome, even though they're sometimes coming from different angles of what they consider a positive outcome to be everyone wants a positive outcome so if you can trust that trust that the magistrate wants things to go well and trust that nobody's there to make your life 
more difficult. Everyone wants to get out of there quickly, really. So the whole point is if you prepare, make sure that you've revised your information that you've given to the court already, that you're comfortable with what that information was, and then deal with your nerves like anybody would. So for me, this morning's been about distraction. That's why I'm talking to you. Uh, it's been about getting a coffee. It's been about um, enjoying the sunshine on my way in this morning. Um, <clears throat> And now that I'm here, I'm ready to go. So if you have to go to court, whether it's as a professional or as just a member of the community, just remember it's really normal to feel nervous. It's really normal to have those butterflies in the tummy. That's because your body knows that you're about to do something out of the ordinary. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to be a bad experience. Hey, Tammy, how are you? Um, gosh, I've got all of you guys. Lots of northern hemispherics here today. Welcome, welcome. Um, so if you do have to go to court, the fact that you feel nervous about it, don't let that throw you that's really really normal and I've done this plenty of times now and I still get those butterflies in the tummy so just uh, be kind to yourself and remember that you're a human being after all I'm going to go in and give evidence now and after I've given evidence today I have no idea how long I'm going to be in the court for but after I've given evidence today I'm going to be uh, treating my mentoring clients to a run through of how I prepare for court what I do in more detail and what things to look out for so you guys are going to get a special treat um, and that's one of the benefits of being one of my mentor and clients if you're interested in that feel free feel free to send me a message I'm gonna go now it is freezing out here this morning and there's a big noisy street sweeper coming to sweep me away so uh, before he gets me there he is <laughs> I'll go I'll head off I'll see you later guys bye bye <laughs>